Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing this little cute house. So um, I'm going to start right away um, with the trees. So I'm going to grab um, a pencil and get going if, I can, if it lets me get it out of the tin. This is number 56 from the Stadler Ergosoft 36 set. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start colouring leaves. Now this is quite a nice base colour, it's quite light. What I'm going to do, and you see I'm going round and round because the tree wants me to do that from it the way it's shaped. So I'm just colouring around and around with this. It's quite a yellowy green, um, but I think it's rather pretty. And um, I'm going to layer other greens on top, so it'll be quite fun. And I'm going to do both trees the same. Uh, I think they look the same. So I think they, I'm going to colour them in the same way. You don't have to do them the same, of course. Completely up to you. So I'm just going round and round. Now I may be missing areas. I can't see very well what I'm doing because it's small. But it doesn't matter because when I grab my next colour, put that one down. I'm going to move on to number 57. Then this will fill in some of the gaps. I may have left. I'm going to do this one a bit more roughly so that it miss, does miss areas. I think that will give it a bit more interest. And the same on this one. It may not show up brilliantly well, but it's okay. There'll be other colours coming. And I think it just looks a little bit more interesting to do a selection of colours than just doing the one. So next I'm going to grab number 52. You can do any colours, um, shades that you want to do. This is all getting progressively darker. The reason I don't start with the dark is because then the light won't show up on top of it. So, so just playing around with it. And you can do just you could just do two shades, you could do ten shades, it's up to you. Depends how many greens you've got, of course. Okay, and I think my very top of the tree looks a bit too green, where I don't think there was much of that lighter colour underneath. So I'm just going to go over it a little bit. And I think it looks quite textured. I don't know how well that's being picked up in the camera. I don't think I can zoom in any more. Oh, I can. Just a tad. Okay, and I'm going to go in with my last colour, which is my five, and I'm going to think a little bit more about um, where it might be darker. So I think it's going to be more, there's going to be more dark at the bottom and around these sort of branchy areas than there might perhaps be elsewhere. And I'm sort of looking at the pattern that Johanna's drawn as well, where it might be dark and light. Now this picture um, appears in this Worlds of Wonder book twice, I, as far as I can tell. I'm just going to rub out my mistake down here. I went out of the lines. This isn't the best. <sighs> it's quite a good rubber really. It's the Tombow Mono Zero. It's the best one I found, but it's just not the best colour to rub out. Is what I wasn't criticising the rubber as much as the colour that I chose to make the mistake with. Okay, now while we've got our greens out, I'm just going to do this bit of grass at the bottom. Now we've got little tiny pieces of grass here, as well as the grass underneath. That cut isn't very grassy. I'm going to grab the 52, and I'm just going to do these little bits... Now normally if there were bits of grass like this I would probably do more than one colour but it's just too teeny tiny and I'm just going to do like under here I put the pencil on its side I'm just going to do a light layer underneath it's not really very much but it just helps to give the illusion that we've got a little bit of grass in front of the house there. I mean most people would have a driveway and things but that, that'll do. That's all I'm going to do fiddling around with that. Now we've got um, tree trunks to do so we're going to grab some browns. I'm having a look at what I've got. 
I'm going to take the lightest that I'm going to be using, 73, to start with and just do a rough light layer over the whole tree and then I'm going to pick out the details with a darker colour, you'll see. There is the first one, it's quite simple. It makes it a little bit quicker having both the same, I find. You don't have to think about what colours you're doing for both of them. Just, just them. Oh, I missed a bit of grass there, haven't I? Hang on. I shall do that quickly. That was 56, wasn't it? There we go. Um, let's just finish that. I'm going to just blend that a little bit into the grass so that the grass and tree come up together. There we go. So the next one is the number 76. This is our next darkest brown and I'm looking at where it's going to be darker. I'm not sure if I need to sharpen this but I'm gonna, I'll go first. So I like to do a bit on the edge of the whole tree. It takes a bit of concentration as you can hear from my voice uh, because it can give it some shape. I have done a tree trunk tutorial recently, right? Demonstrated on a much bigger tree than this one, and then I need to bring the colour in a bit towards the centre so it doesn't look like a stripe. So I'm just scumbling it a little bit in. And hopefully, you can see that gives this looks more rounded than this one. But I need to just add a little bit more colour in, inwards I think. Let's just check. That's better. And we'll do the same with this one. So starting quite low, quite a dark line around the edge to start with, sort of the bottoms of the branches. And here we've got this little bit so we have to leave that bit out for now and then just bring it in a little bit and here we'd have a bit of shadow yeah it's a little bit darker and I'm gonna do that dark because it's it's like a little hole isn't it a little animal lives in there or something see it's got a little bit more shape to it now so that's our trees now <coughs> excuse me I'm going to do the front door in a wood so it's going to be quite similar so I'm going to take the same color the 73 and uh, start with a layer of that now we've got a door handle on here which is very teeny tiny I'm going to color over it and then I'm going to color it in at the end in the in a color that I feel will work so now I've grabbed the darker brown again, the 76. Now the first thing I always do is to mark over these lines because that shows us that it's wood. And then I do tiny little lines all over to sort of also imitate that wood look. I've actually done that on a picture in here that I just finished more effective I'll just show you on a bigger picture um, down here look oops there's a door there that's exactly the same technique I'm sure you'll want to see what this is I shall zoom out for you this is the um, gumball um, machine picture and so I um, I did the wooden door but I used about six different browns on that one so a lot more than I've got here because with my Ergosoft set whoops sorry um, we're more limited in colour and we've got such a teeny tiny space but what I am going to do is go in that still looks slightly blurred doesn't it sorry um, go is to go in with my other dark brown which is 77 
and do another layer of teeny tiny stripes. And it does darken the wood up as well. Now what you usually do is go over these lines every time so they always are defined and then to put my little lines in between them it just gives a wood effect. As I say it's pretty hard to see on this little door but uh, it's definitely there. Now next I'm going to do the windows. I want the windows to be all bright and light and lovely and welcoming. Now I would often do with a window is to take two yellows and do a sort of orangey one around the outside and a, a lighter yellowy, more yellow one in the middle. But we've got very small windows so I'm going to do it on this one and just do a layer of this one around the edge of it. What's interesting is I'm colouring on this card um, of the um, it's the French flap of the cover and it feels fine but the others are too small so I'm just going to use the number one for those. Sorry that was the number I didn't say number 11. So I'm going to go into this space and it may not really show anyway so it's quite blunt this pencil I'm just going to sharpen it. You'll have to excuse the um Oh look, you've got a lovely mushroom reflection on top of my sharpener. Okay, it's not completely sharp, but it'll be a lot better. And I'm going to do every window. Now these lines here, I did think they might be curtains, but I think they're just panes of glass. And I can't really be doing with thinking about curtains on such a little itty house, itty bitty house. Right, next, the roof. Now I'm going to do it in grey, it's quite dull, I know, but uh, we've got number eight and I think these slate tiles, whatever they are. Now I think Johanna showed us in one of her videos how she did tiles, which is how I do them. I may have learnt from a previous video of hers to so start off darker with more layers here and then fade off towards the end and you can even leave a tiny white piece and then when you do the next layer now that one I didn't fade off enough so I'm going to push some darker colour there so when you get to the next layer and you start off dark here it gives an idea of depth and shadow which is good so we're just moving all the way along and doing the same now you don't have to do grey do any colour and you think about what colour you're going to do the house you could do a matching colour so say if you did a blue house you could do a dark blue roof and a lighter blue house something like that they have different different things so you can do strange noise. I'm trying to work out what it is. Sounds like someone's using sandpaper. It might be outside. It's really sunny today. So people will probably out and about in their gardens. I should be out in mine. It's really messy. The magpie has been dropping sticks all over the garden from making his nest and it's such a mess. I'm going to go in quite hard under here because these are underneath. There. Yeah. Now I want this part and the top also to be grey but I'm going to use my light grey so it looks different to the tiles so it's number 80 yeah I need to go out and tidy because Magpie was choosing sticks for his nest but he's finished now he's built his nest I haven't seen him in the garden for ages so I need to tidy it up but I've just it's been I've been enjoying my new colouring book um, making a few extra videos ready for when the children were off school and things like that and actually just enjoying the fact that I haven't got a job at the moment um, I did end up losing my job in the end um, it was okay um, I am freelance um, I'm choosing a colour for the house and I'm going to choose blue so uh, but it's been rather a, a relief number 37 because I had been working seven days a week for a year um, I'm just going to do just a light layer 
first as I do when I can't quite decide what I'm going to do and then I'll have a think yeah I was working seven days a week for a year since March really um, last year and it's March now and um, actually the video won't go out till April it's the end of March and uh, although it was lovely to have uh, some money coming in um, some extra money coming in I say I was paying off big chunks of our mortgage with it we didn't actually need the extra money as it were it's uh, it was getting a bit relentless and uh, so I decided to take before I look for anything else I decided to take some time off um, and I'm concentrating on chilling um, I last couple of weeks I've been the children been having their mock exams I've been helping them with that a little bit and uh, I'm just going to not th think about um, things much until after Easter. Now this part of the house is facing, it's more forward than these bits, these bits are behind so I think they're going to be a little bit darker so I'm going to put a line here and then shade outwards to uh, just make emphasize the fact that this is further behind and same here houses are interesting I don't think I've colored a house for you before because uh, we Johanna doesn't have a lot of houses normally but I it's, uh, it's really nice to have some houses to color so do you see I've done the same thing it's a little bit darker along here and then just faded out a bit I'm also going to make it a little bit darker under the roof line and under each window but I'm going to be very gentle, I don't want too much and it's fairly easy to be gentle with these straight windows but the rounded window you need to be a bit more careful with I just think it emphasises the windows, brings them out a little bit there we go. Now the door handle I haven't done yet. I'm going to just do it black. Now you could use a gel pen for this. I'm going to use number nine and uh, just do that just simply. And now the only bit we have left is the top of the chimney pot and I want a colour that ties in. So I'm actually just going to go for a nice light blue and pick number 30 just for that one it might not look that different to the rest of the house but there we go so there's our cute little house I think Johanna's done a wonderful job with that one it's absolutely gorgeous so I hope that was useful I hope you enjoyed watching and thank you for watching and happy colouring <laughs>